Gather round, fellow fans of Strange Nightmares. This time around, we're going to travel back in time to September 19th, 1921. And I'm going to read for you an article that was published in the Washington Times about the killer, Carl Grossman. Before I begin, please like, share, and subscribe to Strange Nightmares on whatever platform you are listening on. Now please join me around the campfire. The headline is, Butcher Held for Killing 20 Girls and Selling Flesh. And the subtitle is, Slayer is Held to be Demented. And then there's another subtitle, which is, Gruesome Crimes Extending Over Many Years Are Pinned on Him. And here's the text of the article. Berlin, September 19th. The best brains of Berlin's detective department were busy today piecing together the last links in the gruesome chain of evidence that would become a hangman's noose for Carl Grossman, were he a normal man. And then there's a heading, stage set for trial. And the text is, the stage is almost set for the trial of the shabby, shivering old man who unquestionably will go down in criminal history as the most cold-blooded fiend ever known. But it is already certain that he will never be hanged or even go to the penitentiary, for he has already proved to be history's worst degenerate, a psychopathic patient, foredoomed in his cradle to turn beast in human form. The most pitiable, if aberrant, living example of the curse of heredity. The confessed killer of a score of girls and women, butcher of their bodies, and seller of the flesh of some of them, in the guise of, quote, veal steak, end quote, or sausage, will spend the rest of his life after a trial that is destined to fill the whole world with shuddering awe in a hospital for the criminally insane. Already famous savants, medical faculties of great universities, and anatomic laboratories are bidding for his skull, are races on to buy his body, even while he is still alive, so that when he dies, he may serve the one solitary useful purpose of his existence, bisection, for the furtherance of criminology. Then there's a heading, Details of Crimes. And the text is as follows. The International News Service is able today to give exclusively some of the printable details of the blood-curdling career of Butcher Grossman. His criminal career dates back to his early youth. He is now more than 60. As a young man, he served 14 years in the penitentiary for an attack on a seven-year-old girl. After he came out of prison, he was watched for a while, but then the police lost track of him. The last they knew, he was keeping a small butcher shop. It is not known exactly how many girls and women fell victims to his fiendishness, but evidence on hand confirms his confession of at least 20 murders. They extend probably over the last 20 years. And then there's a Subheading, Add Brazen Nerve. And the text is, The almost superhuman cunning, which goes with his kind of degeneracy, as well as unmitigated nerve, of the brazen, bully sort, made it possible for him to ply his bestial trade in the thick of one of Berlin's busiest, most populated, and yet darkest districts, the area around the Salesian Railroad Station. Since his arrest, many persons have told the police of having seen, almost daily, this thin, shabbily dressed, senile sliding along the narrow little streets and alleys in that district. Nearly all of them recall that each time they saw him, he carried a package, usually of brown wrapping paper. He held it tightly with both hands almost hugging it to his stomach. Children, 
barefoot tenement tots have come forward with stories of this bogeyman sometimes looming out of some dark hallway and watching them with uncanny stare as they played ring around a rosy in the gutter. The next subheading is carried his victims. Little did those who caught such glimpses of Carl Grossman know that in the packages he hugged were human flesh and bones, still warm, and that his errand usually was one of two things, to peddle the contents to some shady itinerant butcher or a half-starved inhabitant of darkest Berlin, or, if unable thus, to dispose of them, to toss them into river or canal. For years, the murky waters of the canal near Andrea Square and those of the Angle Becken have from time to time yielded fragments of women's bodies. Always every resource of the famed criminal palace was employed to track down the murderer, but always in vain. Girl after girl, woman after woman, was reported mysteriously missing. Supposedly a victim of Jack the Slaughterer, but never was there any substantial clue to lead to his identity. The next subheading is Story of Discovery. Yet, the sight of that half-dark, filth-sodden tenement room in which the fiend was finally caught red-handed showed that one single perfunctuary inspection of the place would have sufficed to clinch the gruesome case and nail the culprit, for it was a veritable slaughter room. Here is the story of his discovery. Grossman had been living for a long time in a single room on the fourth floor of the house. The room served him as a combination kitchen, bedroom, and parlor, and operating room. People in the same house and those adjoining had frequently occasion to complain of the mysterious old man, and the wonder to all Berlin is that none ever tipped the police. But. It is a shady quarter of this metropolis, and most of its inhabitants have more to hide than to reveal. Though in many cases the secret is only unspeakable misery. The next subheading is Made Loud Noises, and the text is as follows. Often. When mounting the dark stairs to his room, Grossman half dragged a girl or woman with him. Never did anyone see the same one. It was always a new face. Soon after they got to the room, there were usually loud, quarrelsome words, sometimes shouts and screams. It was on the night of August 21st that he fetched his latest and last victim up to the slaughter room. Grossman was obviously drunk and made more noise than usual in going upstairs. The door of his room had hardly been slammed shut when pitiable moans and screams began to be heard. Most of his fellow dwellers merely turned over on the other side with a casual remark, the old man is at his tricks again. But the screams grew louder and louder and finally someone notified the police. When they came, the operation was over, and the room was dark. To their knocks, Grossman gruffly responded that it was too late for him to open the door. They forced it, and what they saw is indescribable. And so this concludes that article published on Monday, September 19th, 1921 in the Washington Times. So what do you think of that story? What do you think about the neighbors always hearing moans and screams 
of women and never notifying authorities until finally someone did. Think about all the women that could have been saved had a neighbor simply cared enough to do something about it. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe to Strange Nightmares on whatever platform you are listening on. Please check out the links below to learn how to support our research and productions. Until next time, I wish you safe travels through all your nightmares.